Then I have the Contrast Black Templar. And what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna require some cleanup because I don't have the steadiest of hands, is I'm gonna come along right here with all these little joints. Kind of get a black line in there. I don't have to clean it up. And also, like underneath these panels, I'm gonna get there. And then, like I said, I'm gonna have to clean it up. Uh, kind of work on my how steady my hand is. There we go. And just kind of go through and get all these little joints and these little like these rivets here. Just kind of go around your model and see and. If your hand's steady enough, you can come underneath this. There you go. I'll have to clean that up. Alright. You guys should be looking pretty good. I had a base mine because I kept chipping paint off when I touched them. So I just kind of slapped some stuff together. I'll fix it up later. Um, so now I'm going to stake scale. It's just a lighter green. Any green will do. And what I want to do is find the areas that are kind of lit. So I'm kind of looking at eye level, seeing where it's hitting. And for example, like right here, I already did that. But like, you know, I think the light would be kind of hitting like right here. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off. If I can get paint on my brush. Like right here. All right, and then like looking at his hands. When the light comes down. Maybe a little bit like right here. And then I'm gonna put it about 70% water. And then I'm gonna go over all those areas like so. So about 70% water mix, get you out of the way. All right, I can just kind of test it. I can see it building up and I got my little dot there. I'm just gonna start down here, kind of push these little circles in. Always ending in the area of the light green because that's where most of the pigment is going to land and for your straights just work it in ever so gently like that and it should dry pretty quick it's going to take you some practice and once you're done with all that you're going to grab your green you're going to grab your green and do all your edge highlighting so where you can all right just hold it steady just come along the edges. And if you're able to, get like an angle on it. You get to hold your model unusual ways. All right, just come in that side there. All right, and your model should be looking pretty good now. Although my camera's busted. All right. So now I'm gonna grab the lightest green I got, which is just cracking skin. Anyone will do. Anywhere you think the light might be really hitting. So like right here. And just come along and just give it a little, a little bit right there. And like on the dots, maybe the backpack, and like up here. Just kind of hold your model and think, okay, if the light's coming down, where we might might pop, might catch like right here on the edge of this little knee. Let it stand out a little bit. So just kind of take the time, look at anywhere, maybe a sharp corner right here. Now you got all that done, just grab any matte black you have, right? And uh, just go over all the details and mess up. Hit some of the green, you can always go back and fix it. And just try to be careful as possible. I might use a smaller brush to get right in there. Now, we're going to do the only reason I bought this model. Uh, we're going to do the scales on him. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. And now, we're going to do the only reason I bought this model. Uh, first, you're going to get the darkest gray you have. So if you got GW stuff, you're gonna, I think it's Corvus Black. I got Army Painter, which is Necromantic Coat. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And what you're going to do for these little dragon scales is you're going to draw the Assassin Creed logo. And you might be saying, shouldn't I look up how to draw dragon scales? And I'd say that... If you want to be a normie, sure. <laughs> and don't make them too small. It's going to be making it difficult. So what we're going to do is just like a little, a little loop. A 
There we go. I guess we got a little happy face. And then above it, you're going to just have a dot. You can come down, swoop down and connect. See how they kind of are on this side? If I get in focus. It's the same thing. It's, it's going to be difficult to see because how dark this black is. And then you can do one next to it. You can do another little swoop. Now, what palette will help you? And then for the bottom part, you just connect the two. Like that. I already got one going, so let's connect it to this one. And for the top, you just hit a little dot and swoop down, and make your little dragon scale. You're gonna continue all the way down. Now this is where a wet palette is gonna come in handy. I got a medium gray and a dark gray, and I've mixed them. Right, and just make sure it flows pretty well. And I'm just going to get the top part. So this big one right here, this might be a little hard to see. He's just going to come out like this. Right, and I'm just going to do it to all of them. And it's okay if you go over because you can always fix it with the next little layer. Now your scales be looking pretty good. So now you're just gonna go to your medium gray. Make sure you've got enough water on your brush that flows all right. You're just gonna come in underneath, all right, and do that kind of little V again. There you go. Just keep working your way up. Now mix your medium gray with your light gray. Whatever you have, I have ash gray, I think, for my light gray and dungeon gray. If you're using an army painter, but uh, actual paints, I don't think really matters. You're gonna come in, you're gonna do the V again. If I can get a little bit more in focus for you. So, you're gonna do that little V again. Once you're done with that, you're just going to highlight with, or go back with that last layer. So you're going to end up these little scales. Now up close, we can focus maybe. Nope. There you go. Remember, you're looking at this maybe, I don't know, six inches away. But on the tabletop, you're going to be looking at like way up here. Hopefully I can get it to focus for you. And there you have it. You get your little scales. Looking all right. I accidentally dropped mine. And got we had to redo the entire thing. Uh, but one thing I did do, I didn't record. I put a little extra dark gray between them, so it makes them stand out a little more. Like I said, you're looking at this maybe three inches away, uh, so you can kind of see the flaws. But when you're way out here, they look pretty good. Uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to work on the knife. For the knife, I'm actually using. <laughs> uh, scale 75 non miller paint set because I always mess it up. I'm doing exactly as it says. Step one, you get graphite SC03. Right, that's right here. Get some water in there. I don't know why. I've always struggled with army painter. I thought maybe it'd get better. I probably thought wrong. All right, I applied that next step, and I will read this. It says apply SCO2, which the color is NASCAR. I got real excited for a second because I thought I said NASCAR, but that is incorrect. Now, this is a Spanish company, so I need to save on Antidoto SC02 a Illuminado. Just put the color on the other side. Got it. Let me do that. I'm just going to put the colors. On the other side, so I got the blade, right? I got my NASCAR white here. I'm gonna put it 
it doesn't matter. I don't know. All right, I'm putting it here, and then I'm putting it on the opposite side. What about all these little guys down here? What do I what do I do with all of them? I have no idea. I'll just like get these guys. I guess there we go. We'll just pretend that's the blade and that's the instructions they gave me. This might come as a shock to you, but my Spanish isn't the best. It's gray blade, mixed blade, and then the white on like the upper and lower half. I'm gonna get this, okay? And now I'm gonna mix the off-white and the white to get the bottom piece. All right, going back to it, um, I noticed that the demos that the <laughs> Skill City Five had—they don't, they don't, um, they don't, they don't uh, lighten down their paint, I guess. So if that's what they do, and you know, the Spanish guy that does it, and as I learned one thing from miniature painting: if you're from Spain, you know how to paint. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just following along their instructions because I just want to be like them. All I'm doing is taking the gray and the lighter gray and mixing them together. to a higher point. Oh, shit. And then add the white to the off-white, supposedly, on the very tips. Then you add the shade by adding black to the blue. Or, I'm sorry, the blue to the gray earlier. Why is it so hard? I just not see color.
But now I guess I glaze it all together because it doesn't look good. I don't know if that helped anyone, but that's the best I can do. Uh, I guess I just have to keep practicing. All right, now we're gonna paint the leather. I've already done a little bit, uh, just to make sure I was doing it right. So that's what we're gonna end up with. So what you wanna start with is this kind of a darker brown. So I got brown fur, but it's inconsequential to what we're doing. So just get all the surfaces, it's like his holster here, his belt, the scabbard here, uh, this belt along the knee. Let's go ahead and just give him a nice little base, making sure you miss anything that uh, you've already painted over, so you don't have to go double back and do work. All right, should be looking pretty good now. All the spots, except I missed right there. Damn it. Uh, anyways. You're gonna get a yellowish brown. I got a desert yellow or reddish brown. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you're gonna just highlight all the areas. If you have paint on your brush. You're gonna highlight all the areas and now there's paint on your brush. So for example, on uh, this little bag right here. Once you're done with that, you're gonna just make sure you don't have too much on your brush. And you're just gonna kind of dab it, right? Or little hashes. So if you can, right, you can do a little hash like this, little lines, just to make it look like it's a little beat up. Or you can just kind of take it, your brush, and just tap it a little bit. You just want little imperfections. All right, so you kind of end up with a little imperfections on it. All right, now that we got all that taken care of, we're gonna come in with our brush and just give little faint lines as much as you can. You know, just trying to go towards any area that might be folded. All right, just come on in so you have these little imperfections along your leather areas. All right, you guys should be looking all right now. I'm grabbing this uh, light tan, the Banshee Brown is what I'm using. It doesn't really matter, I think. Uh, and what we're gonna do is little dots. So you can put a little, couple little dots here and there. All right, oops, that's a little too much, that's okay. Where, you know, your leather might be going, even maybe a little, little line. Uh, but mainly what we're gonna do is everywhere you have, Highlight it out, All right? So you're gonna want to come along here like this little leather and just little chops, little chops. It's gonna take a while, but that's okay. It's gonna look all right. All right, he should be looking all right now. Um, we're gonna grab brown oak and you're gonna put about 70% water into it and we're gonna glaze it all in uh, so you're gonna to want to work your way to the center so for example with this part I'm gonna start on the outside I'm just gonna glaze it into the middle just kind of bring it all together right because I want wherever it's gonna be darkest like most intact 
I want the pigments to be the belt there. So like for the belt, it's kind of moving into the middle. Just do what you can. Take your time. Just trust yourself. You can probably do about, mm, I don't know how thick it is, maybe th three to six. All right, and the last part here, we're gonna highlight, or shadow some, we're gonna get any matte black you have and just get it watered down as much as possible. And just glaze some of these spots. That's, even that was too much. Like, that much, like almost nothing. Cause it's just very, a lot of pigments in black. So for example, with this holster right here, yeah, this is kind of like right here underneath. We'll just kind of draw up the middle here where it's maybe a little darker underneath and going into the shadows. Right on along the belt here, maybe it's a little bit right in the middle of the belt. So there you go, maybe a little bit up here underneath the grenades. Just be very careful. If you think it's too much black, just wipe it off and water it out. It should be looking all right, if I can get into focus. And it should be looking okay, you know? But now we're gonna move over to the head. And I got tan flesh. I think KBF flesh is the same as the W. We're just gonna work the head a little bit, get all the skin on there, get our base coat on. All right, now we're gonna keep working on the head. Uh, I got my dry palette, which is simply a cheap plate I bought. Uh, I don't think you need anything crazy. And I have the previous flesh, the barbarian flesh, which is another one. I'm just gonna start mixing them. So it's just a little bit lighter. Uh, if I was doing, you know, a range of models, I'd probably use my wet palette and I would measure out all the different ones. I just need to make sure that this is just a little bit lighter than the previous version. I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy. The one I do about that consistency, that looks pretty good. I get my detail brush that I want. And like, I'm probably gonna wear about 90% of the model. Uh, it's like the recesses of his eyes. I'm gonna let that stay there. I'm gonna go above it. Right. And like right next to his hairline. He's running like this, so maybe right up next to it. Just all the way up to, but not including it. Oops, a little extra. That's okay. Is almost right up to his hairline, but not quite covering it. And then, you know, anywhere else, I think there might be a little bit of shadow, so I'll leave a little bit like right here at the bottom between where his gear is. We'll finish that up. There you go, should be looking all right. Well, let's go ahead and start pulling in a little more of our. Barbarian flesh, just our, our lighter tones. We got maybe 50 50 to maybe one to two parts. We're gonna go over the same little parts we did before. So, like, make sure you get his eyebrow, because that's what we want to be raised. And just like, so we left this very bottom, so I just want to go like the next little layer up and hit it around and maybe. Leave this down here open because we're only gonna hit maybe 70% of the afflicted area now. You might be saying to yourself, why aren't you playing your guy black like all the other salamanders? And my answer is that simple. I haven't figured out how to paint that yet, so <laughs> this is what I got. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna grab just the pure. Barbarian flesh, and this is where we're going to start 
you know, little highlights, right? Where is the most lit part of him is? So that's going to be his eyebrow. And this little ridge where he has the scar. You're going to cover maybe, I don't know. Last one was 70 and you're looking at maybe 40, 50% of the model. Like down here, I'm not going to bother that anymore. In between the two scars, probably not so much. But I definitely want to make sure I hit like up here. This might be the last one I put between the studs and get up here. And on to our last part, it's just a little elven flesh. This is just like a yellowish skin, if you have it. <clears throat> this is where we're gonna do our, our final highlighting. That looks about right. And like I said, if you're doing a whole squad, you're, you're gonna wanna get a more exact detail than that. So just make sure you hit all the really raised areas, the eyebrow, the scars and maybe kind of top part of his chrome there is facing the light and for that part if it's too much you can always try to glaze it in a little bit in your final highlight just go ahead and grab just the elven flesh, just the thinnest lines you can. To put it right over it. And maybe a little dot right there in the middle. And like I say, if any part looks a little too chunky, just kind of glaze it in there like you've done everything else. All right, and there you go. You're starting to look all right. Now I'm going to get a skull. I'm going to do all the skulls the same way. I painted some previously. Uh, I also dropped the figure and destroyed his face where I had his face on. So I just went ahead and attached it to the body. Uh, so what we're going to do is like, we're going to paint up his skull, which God damn it, this was still on his base. It'd be way easier. He's going to come through with his dungeon gray, making sure you hit it all much as you can and like these little swords skulls on the back we're gonna do the same thing take your time to look around it is a Warhammer model so there are skulls literally everywhere in this model Right, now you're just going to grab a lighter gray and just go over the pieces like the skull I'm going to leave right underneath the sword open and I'm not going to worry about blending them because it's pretty small and this guy's not going into a competition or anything so for the face right I want to leave the bottom open I want to make sure I get the teeth right and inside the nose is gonna remain the same. I'm gonna show you the top. Like the darkest part of underneath the high piece there, I'm gonna leave. Like those recesses, I'm gonna hit everything else. And this part of the skull where I ripped off a piece from my thumb just now. All right, now we finished that. We're gonna grab like a lightest gray you have. And we're just gonna 
finish up those points. And honestly, this little skull guy, you could probably just, you know, not do any of that. That's what you could do. Let's save it for your lightest. <laughs> and this one, get it right in there. And for the face, let's make sure you get the teeth and the elevated surfaces and just kind of maybe 50% of it, right? As much as you can. It's a little hard to see. I'm, I'm working on a new setup. It'll be all right. There you go. And the last we have just the lightest gray you got or a white. And just pick up the highlights on top of the nose, his teeth, you know, the ridge up here. Uh, for like the skull, you can get like the little eyebrows in the skull. A little bit up here, little tips. Like this little guy here, you can just try to, well, do your best. He's tiny. And there you go, he's looking okay. Uh, now I'm going to work on the pit boy. I got some red. I think it's pure red. The Games Workshop. Not Games Workshop. Iron Painter Games Workshop. I think it's equivalent is Blood Angel Red. Whatever. It's not important. And I'm going to go on the pit boy. And I'm just going to give a little, little color to the buttons. And something breaks it up, you know? And since I have nothing else, I don't like all the black. I'm gonna put a little red here for this wire just to break things up. Now I got Crip Wrath is just a dark, dark green. I would put it on his eyeball, but we're also gonna put it on his little pit boy here. I don't, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I should actually get back into actually playing 40K one day. Actually, know what things are. But that's okay. We're gonna make this nice and green. Another one is I and Pip. Boy, completed. Hopefully, I recorded that properly. I got a dark bluish gray, uh, wolf gray by Army Painter. And what I'm going to do is get the finest little line that I can. And I would, you know, you got to practice a little bit because you don't want to go back and have to fix it. So just make sure you got a little little dot like just check on your little thumb there you go even then it's not falling well enough sometimes with larger parts you can get away with it I'm trying to do this tiny little detail you got to make sure it's the right level of dryness and wetness there we go this one straight line down. One across. Okay, that's a terrible idea. He's gonna go back to being a gym. But for the pit boy, we're gonna keep it the same. We're gonna do one line down the middle. As fine as we can. Hopefully the camera catches it because I cannot. I cannot use the camera to paint this fine little line. Nope, I've already boogered it. I have to restart.
quite well. Wait for all that to dry. We can get a side. Let's get a matte white or really a little bit off gray. Come in there and get his eyeball. And if you're like me and mess it up, it's okay. Because this, this, you know, it just reminds you of things you need to improve on. Let's get your flesh tone and go back over it. There you go. And if you're like me, you don't want to paint an eyeball. Come on down to any model store. Get yourself a Gundam marker, find his print, and just stab him in the eye. Close enough. And now I have a slice dark green, uh, goblin green is what I'm using. And for the eyeball, we're going to make like an L shape. There we go. I guess a crescent moon shape. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get what we can here. Just work it down. So we're just kind of leaving this top upper left corner dark. Now I got, now I got snake scales. It's the mix lighter green as we work our way up we're going to do the same thing just this time we're just going to stay in a little bit farther in this time same thing with his eye we're going to do that two more times and one more time and then we're going to put a little dot in the lightest green we have and he'll be done All right, and after playing with it, that's about the best I can do. You can see I get little L shapes going down, and then the last light green or white, I put a little dot, same thing for the eyeball. All right, and now, uh, if you wanna highlight his pit boy, you can just use the same gray as you did before. Now we're gonna knock out his little uh, face. I'm gonna go with a red. I was thinking white, but I'm gonna go with red. Now I have some abomination gore. It's just a dark brown red. I mean, the colors aren't that important. Uh, unless you want it exactly the same, I don't think anyone does. And we're gonna just get the purity seal with that, or the, the wax part. Now I got Vampire red was just another dark red. It's not as dark. And we're going to do two things. First, we're going to do the edge highlight around, right? So you want to get all that circle. And then I'm going to exaggerate it here. You're just going to kind of like put your brush and do a little squiggles like this, you know? So it looks like writing. Great, I'm making it bigger you're actually going to make it on this little bitty seal like no one's got to know that there ain't nothing actually there All right and then we're going to come in with the next red and we're just going to highlight a little bit more now i got my next darkest or my next red uh if you only have like two reds you can always do like your dark red and medium red and just kind of mix them I'm just going to highlight a couple little tips here. 
And then once they gave me little squiggles, little happy squiggles. Just make it look like there's like a little seal of some sort there. Now for all the rest of them, I'm gonna start base coating it in that color. So it's still reddish, but I want it to be different than the wax. All right, now you're gonna grab pure, I got pure red, you can grab whatever. It's a medium red. You know, remember, you can always mix the paints to get here. And I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing with all the other layering. I'm gonna keep the darkest layers dark as we kind of go down. We're gonna do one more layer like that. So this little area might be a little darker, so we'll kind of go around it a little bit, leave a little patch in there. Right, leave this area in there a little darker. The area right up and leading up to the wax seal. Right, and where it folds over, we'll leave that a little dark as well. I'm not gonna orangish red. It's Mars red if you use an army painter, but it doesn't matter. Just combine with some orange, you'll be right. And now I'm just grabbing all the highlighted bits, right? So like the edges here. This this part's a little more elevated, so I'm gonna grab that. Like here on the side, like this is elevated. And this is, so I'll grab that. But this part down here is not really in there, so I'll just grab the edge. When it comes back here and catch the light again, I'll add a little bit, right? And all this down here. All right, there you go, looking all right. So now, once again, we're gonna kind of shake the brush. So you're gonna start up here with like a, I don't know, maybe like a little T or a big T and some white. I ever touch the model? Not dry enough or too wet? Not wet enough? Let's try it again. Test it on your thumb. There you go. So we're going to come in here. We're going to pick a good, what appears to be a capital letter. There you go, and some squiggles. And then some more squiggles. Some little flashes. And some dots, like you got some Morse code going on. There you go. And if you want to be a baller, you can write his name in there. <clears throat> I mess it up every time, so I guess I'm not a baller, uh, but you know, do what you gotta do. There you go, don't look half bad. Now, I'm just gonna come in here like his bullets, probably this copper, any old copper you have. I think what, what I have, like weapon bronze, or something, this little symbol over his butt. And I don't like this being black, so I'm gonna get his uh, scabbard as well. He's looking all right. Uh, don't ignore the, the grenades. I messed that up. Don't, don't worry about those. Uh, I got a little bit of flesh wash, and I'm just gonna go over the pieces I have here. And all you gotta do is just grab a slightly lighter gold. I wanna do some highlights. Other than that, I'm pretty much done. Just make sure you get the flesh wash enough time to dry. There you go. There's your guy. Don't, don't look at those grenades.